Welcome to the Weekly Water Outlook for January 13th, 2013. I'm John Felt. Well, this is where the rain fell uh, over the last seven days, and you can see uh, pretty much there's one primary axis of heavier rain. That's that area of yellow, red, and purple that extends from Texas uh, and the immediate Gulf Coast up towards the northeast across Arkansas and into the Ohio Valley. We uh, see in yellow there two inches of rain. The red is five inches of rain. Purple is 10 inches of rain. So there was significant rain. In Texas, it was mainly a welcome rain, uh, water resource recharge for the drought. But then as it moved up into areas that have been a bit wetter into the Ohio Valley, the threat turns more into a flood threat. We look at percent of normal, you can see very clearly again where the heavier rain fell with purple areas above normal rainfall. Also take a look up at the northern tier of the U.S. That was snowfall, and snowfall was above normal up across the very farther northern tier of the U.S. Over the southwest uh, U.S. and also the southeast U.S., pretty quiet week. Red indicates well below normal rainfall for those areas. Now, if I take a look at the update for snow over the last week, you can see that snow is confined over the uh, Intermountain West and the northern tier of the U.S. This is pretty much a typical snow pattern for January, as well as the far northeast U.S. Uh, there was a band of snow from Illinois down uh, just touching the uh, northeast part of Missouri. I think you can see that a little bit better on this graphic here. Uh, this was new snow last week. There was a band of snow right in here that's new. Uh, but this shows the snow depth and also the snow coverage um, across the nation um, currently on the ground. Okay, so soil moisture. Um, what we saw last week was uh, some improvements in soil moisture over parts of Texas. And I'll point that out a couple times here, but basically this area here, um, soil moisture improved last week uh, due to about an inch or two of rain in that region. You can see soil moisture now. It's pretty close to normal. Uh, we have an area of well above normal soil moisture, and this is an area of vulnerability uh, should heavy rain fall in there in the future. That'll be there at least for a couple weeks of vulnerability. In the middle part of the country, we're still looking at defi uh, deficits of soil moisture, very dry in this region um, for soil moisture. Now keep in mind, when I talk about drought impacts uh, such as soil moisture, um, some of these are short-term impacts. Soil moisture is a short-term impact because with a couple inches of rain, you can make up for uh, some ground as far as very dry conditions. On the other hand, we have lagging indicators. Lagging indicators, um, an example of these might be um, stream flow, depending on the stream, and inflows into re reservoirs and reservoir elevations because you first have to get the ground saturated. And that's why I do focus on soil moisture because that's very important. In that area of green, uh, you would have much more runoff, whereas in the area um, of red, it's going to go into upper soil uh, recharge. So as far as rivers go, currently this is a, a general overview across the nation. Uh, what we see are not too many areas with above normal stream flow. That'd be the areas in blue, and these are representative of areas that received some significant rain over the last week. Um, but for the most part, in the middle part of the nation there, especially Kansas and Oklahoma, uh, long-term drought, rivers still remain quite low. And then parts of the eastern, the mid-Atlantic, and the southeast U.S., um, the rain's really been tapering off as it gets through that central part of the U.S. into the east, and rivers remain very low in that area as well. So if we look at the drought monitor here, um, what I want to point out is an area of recharge here um, where we saw some improvement. And that's that area of um, blue dashed line uh, in Texas, uh, eastern part of Texas. That region last week did receive a couple inches of rain, and there was some improvement of the drought uh, monitor uh, impacts. Most of the rest of the nation, pretty much status quo, not a lot of change. Okay, now I'm going to shift and talk a little bit about this week's briefing. And one of the things I wanted to point out is the impact of temperature patterns. Uh, this is a current temperature pattern today. And uh, as we get, obviously, up in the northern part of the U.S., uh, those are very cold temperatures. Southeast U.S., that red, is warmer temperatures. And if you look right here in the middle part of the uh, area, what you see um, is a very strong gradient here going from warm to cold. And that is typically the area that I would want to look at where our precipitation will form. And that is where we have the heaviest rain and the axis of heaviest rain currently and into this week. The other thing um, I want to point out is 
oftentimes the rain moves along these boundaries. So this would be the motion of the precipitation along that boundary, and then right in where the gradient is tightest is where we'd expect the heaviest rain. Okay, so let's go into teleconnections, a quick overview here. Um, teleconnections have been driving the precipitation patterns and the temperature patterns this winter so far. The Arctic Oscillation is one I really rely on. It's worked out pretty uh, good this uh, season so far. You might uh, remember I said this week we were going to have a very abrupt turn into a negative phase, which we did, and that's that cold air plunging into the central part of the nation. But look at this here. Over the next week, it's going to return very quickly back to neutral and then much greater spread as we get into the middle part of the month. So I think the story as far as the Arctic Oscillation is a very uh, big uh, changes uh, going from positive to negative and then negative back to positive as we get into January. And that's most likely going to mean fairly abrupt changes in both temperature and precipitation patterns. Now this is another teleconnection that I uh, will talk about occasionally. It's a little bit more complex where the Arctic Oscillation um, is on the order of a couple weeks or so before it sort of fluctuates back and forth. This is a longer term oscillation called, called the Madden-Julian Oscillation. And this is an oscillation that's between 45 days and maybe 60 days or so. And what we look at for the MJO are um, areas of unsettled weather, enhanced precipitation that actually move around the globe and then we describe what area they're in by um, one through eight. So here we have one, two is the Indian Ocean as it goes around. Um, and basically the, when I start getting interested in this is six, seven, and eight. That's when it gets into the Pacific. Um, the other thing in this graph here, and this is a very complicated graph, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it, um, but basically when these plots of values, and these are plots of different values, are right here in the middle, the MJO is weak. And that's why I haven't mentioned it a whole lot. It's been weak. But the forecast calls for it to strengthen. It has strengthened. And get it, and the, the pattern get more into the Pacific. And when it does that, there's the possibility of enhanced precipitation over parts of the U.S., primarily the Pacific Northwest and the Southeast U.S. Now, I don't see that quite yet, but I just wanted to mention that I'm going to keep an eye on this um, as we go through January into February to maybe see if there could be a um, tie-in with the MJO. Now, you might say what that might look like. Well, this is today's water vapor satellite picture, and what we have here is um, we have... Look at this. Here's this tap of moisture from the Pacific all the way into this line of precipitation in the Ohio Valley. Here's a good example of that unsettled weather in the tropical Pacific can be tapped and focus precipitation over parts of the nation. And my experience is that when you tap this mid and upper level moisture um, from the Pacific, along with Gulf moisture at lower levels, you can get extremely heavy rainfall. So this is an example of one of the teleconnections, um, the possibility of tapping into that if that MJO um, gets into uh, a little bit more into the Central Pacific later this month. I thought I'd show an update of the jet stream pattern this week. The blue lines are indicative of the upper jet stream flow. You can even see some of the blue arrows showing some of the uh, wind flow as well. And the shaded areas in yellow are the pulses of energy. So the uh, direction of the flow is important and the amount of energy that we have is important. So as we go through the week, we see for the most part, uh, we have um, a area of low pressure or actually a, a cyclonic low over Canada and the jet stream dips very much into the southwest U.S. and then pushes out into the eastern U.S. And this is going to be the active track at least this week and then it's going to quiet down quite a bit. So if we look as we go through the week, it looks fairly quiet. We don't see any uh, real key sources of energy. Now, early this week, uh, as we start the week, uh, we can see that there is a, a pattern of energy pushing over the region, causing precipitation. And then as we go out through the week, we continue that uh, strong trough over the central part of the U.S. And then this is the next system of energy that's going to sort of kick out later in the week. And as we get towards the middle and the latter part of the week, here's this next core of energy, and that's going to provide another pulse of precipitation from the Gulf Coast states up into the Ohio Valley. Now, if we go beyond that, we see a significant change. As we get into the latter part of the week, Friday and into next weekend, the jet stream starts to pull up towards the north as that negative Arctic Oscillation relaxes, 
and it becomes very quiet over the southern tier of the United States. We don't see any energy here. Um, the flow is generally from a west to east, and it's going to keep the cold air up mainly to the north. So um, bottom line, it looks like the week's going to start out with some energy uh, ejecting out of the southwest U.S., and then as we get into the latter part of the week, a much more benign type pattern and fairly quiet conditions. Okay, so here's the uh, rainfall forecast this week. Um, I mentioned the temperature gradient. You can see the heaviest rainfall centered along that temperature gradient. And as I showed in the jet stream analysis, there will be several um, areas of energy rotating around, one currently and then one towards the middle and latter part of this week. And it looks like it's going to be right along that temperature gradient and along that core of energy as it rotates around. And it could be one to three inches of rain over parts of Alabama, um, up into northwest Georgia, into parts of of, um, Tennessee and maybe even parts of um, the Carolinas, Western Carolinas, and parts of Virginia. Um, one of the things that we look at for uh, flooding are uh, we, we take this precipitation and we run it through hydrologic models and the Weather Service gives the outlook for some flooding. And I did want to mention um, the possibility of some flooding over parts of the Ohio Valley and also parts of the along the Mississippi Alabama coast our border. Um, the moderate flooding are the areas in red and majors purple. And those are the areas really to focus on. Um, the, the yellow or orange is minor flooding. Actually, the yellow is just in-bank rises. But keep your eye on the areas in red and purple. That's where more significant flooding is possible throughout the week. So if I look at trends and threats, what I see here, um, is a very area of dry weather. And I, in my Texas briefing and Oklahoma briefing, I really brought out that this is a longer term trend. I, I really see not just this week, but maybe in all through next week as well, predominantly dry weather in that region. Um, the most active area this week as far as uh, rainfall goes will be the southeast U.S. into the Ohio and Tennessee river valleys with rainfall, and I outlined in the red dashed line the potential for flooding, and then seasonal snowfall from the northern tier across parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan, uh, pretty much typical snow for this time of the year. So the takeaway points this week, a heavy rain recharge event, possible flooding, especially in the Ohio Valley, um, prolonged dry spell over the west and southwest, and seasonal snow over the northern tier of the U.S. Been much more active lately than we saw um, in November and December, um, but it does look like after this week, the next uh, week will probably be quite a bit quieter. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Water Outlook. I will be updating this next week.